Hey gang, my guest tonight, Brian Peterson, is going to explain how there's paranormal activity in the Bible. See you in about five minutes. Grab your popcorn and snacks, find a comfy spot, take a seat or lie down, and let me transport you to a place of fantasy, ghost stories, ancient legends, odd creatures, alien encounters, and other magical topics. You may even decide to join the conversation. 
from faraway lands to your own backyard with a small dash of pixie dust. Turn out the lights and open your minds. The journey is about to begin. My guest tonight, Brian Peterson, is going to explain how there's paranormal activity in the Bible. See you in about five minutes. Grab your popcorn and snacks. 
Find a comfy spot, take a seat or lie down, and let me transport you to a place of fantasy, ghost stories, ancient legends, odd creatures, alien encounters, and other magical topics. You may even decide to join the conversation. From faraway lands to your own backyard, with a small dash of pixie dust, turn out the lights and open your minds. The journey is about to begin. Good evening, everybody. I hope you're all enjoying your 4th of July. I know I am. I'm going to be going out soon to see the fireworks. Uh, I've been uh, been having barbecues with my family, all that good stuff. Welcome to the show. My name is Charlotte. I'm going to be your host for the next hour. And boy, have I got a show for you tonight. My guest, Brian Peterson, is going to be talking ghosts and the Bible. I'm not going to go into detail over it because I'm going to let him explain it to you because he's the expert. I'm not. Right? But anyway, welcome to all. If you're watching from Facebook, please be sure to follow. If you're watching from Twitch, please be sure to follow. If you're watching from YouTube, please be sure to subscribe. There's a little uh, ghost down in the bottom right-hand corner with a magnifying glass and a Sherlock Holmes hat on, and that's our mascot. And there's over 250 videos over there for for you to peruse on, on lots and lots of topics. And I think there's something there for everybody. Anyway, I want to welcome you all. Um... Don't get too don't get too overheated today. Uh, it's probably hot out there, but uh, Independence Day, of course. Anyway, um, I am the owner of the California Haunts Paranormal Investigation Team, based out of Sacramento. We are 45 strong up and down the state of California, which means we're almost in every county. So if you have something if you think you have something paranormal going on in your house, you give us a call. We have somebody out who can help you. Somebody available. Even if we're two counties away, we have somebody that can help you within the area. But uh, like I said, thank you guys for coming. And I'm real excited to have this guest on. So without further ado, I'm going to bring Ryan on and uh, let's meet him. Let's get to know him a little bit. Hello, sir. Hi, Charlotte. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. So happy to be on. Thank you for having me. How is your 4th of July going? Great. Wonderful. Uh, any day that I can just uh, not do my day job and spend time with the family and having fun and doing things like this. This is like, this is my, my, my real passion uh, is a great day. <laughs> Fantastic. Can you tell me about yourself? Absolutely. So uh, for everyone watching and listening in, I am Ryan Peterson. I, uh, you know, in my bio, I go, uh, I am called a biblical researcher is really my, 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 my kind of title. And I'm an author of two books, uh, judgment of the Nephilim and the final Nephilim, but really, you know, my area of focus, and I love the Bible. I love research in the supernatural is really about what I call the supernatural interpretations in the Bible, the aspects of scripture that you normally do not hear about in church. You don't hear about in Sunday school, all the questions about, you know, are there spirits in the Bible? Where did the fallen angels come from? Why is Goliath a giant? Why is he nine feet tall? Where is he from? You know, things like that are what I like to really explore because I think there's an exciting supernatural history in the Bible that uh, really helps the Bible make a lot more sense, <laughs> uh, frankly. And so that's uh, kind of my specialty. So how does one become a or decide to do what you do? Yeah, well, you know, um, uh, you know, I when I, I went to school, so I'm a, I'm a lawyer by trade. I went to law school. So, you know, of course, in law school, we had lots of uh, Nephilim studies, angelic studies. <laughs> no, we did not. I'm joking. <laughs> um, no, you know, uh, it was really just it was interesting. It was I, I was working on my career. I was, I'm from New York. I, I, I live in Texas now. I was born and raised in New York City. I started my career working in, in a law firm in New York City and just living life. And I was raised a Christian. And at that time. Um, I wasn't really serving or doing anything in the church. I wasn't too active spiritually. And I, what I realized was what really got me into it was Bible prophecy. I started getting into Bible prophecy and I started seeing how the, I never really got much into the Bible predicting the future and mm -hmm. supernatural aspects of the Bible. And so much of, I think, you know, content like you discussed, like I've always been fascinated by the paranormal. I'm a sci-fi fanatic. And so the supernatural has always fascinated me. And when I realized um, there was a really a whole world in the Bible that we weren't taught in church, it just sparked my passion. So I started doing what people do, going down the rabbit hole, YouTubes, buying DVDs, listening to podcasts and documentaries. And then I learned about the Nephilim, something I never knew about growing up my entire life. And this idea that fallen angels not only came to earth 
but married women and had hybrid offspring with them. For those who don't know what a Nephilim is or Nephilim, that's what it means. It's talking about a half human, half angelic hybrid. And that that's actually in the Bible. <laughs> um, it really just changed my whole perspective. And so, um, and it's just amazing how God works because now all the things I did in my professional life, researching, writing, taking notes, taking my time, I just applied to really go back. And what I want to do is also find out what did the ancient church believe? What did people believe 2000 years ago? What did ancient Jewish communities, what did they write about this stuff? That's really what I bring to the table is going back to see what, what we thought about when people readily acknowledge the supernatural. You know, I say like, you know, you see behind me, I have the Kingston sign behind me. my family's from Jamaica. And so I'm a first generation American. And I always talk about how it's interesting that when you go to certain other nations, the ideas of ghosts, demons, supernatural realms, it's very commonly accepted. It's not like, oh, you, you know, it's, it's much more common in other countries than in America to, to understand these things and want to learn about them. And so I think all this just came together for me at one time to just start researching, getting deep into it and start writing my books. And so my first book, really, Judgment of the Nephilim, deals with the beginning, Genesis, and how this all started. And the final Nephilim goes right to the end of the book of Revelation, to end time prophecy, to the future, to the predictions of the end times. So, yeah. So that's uh, what led me to where I am today. Well, what I find interesting about that is that I grew up Catholic. And, of course, you know, for me, being a ghost hunter, that's a no-no. You know, and it's like, oh, you know what? My computer's not plugged in. I just realized it. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, and for and like I said, for me, that's a no-no because, you know, it's considered blasphemous to do. But like you say, there's instances in the Bible that, explain all this you know the, the that have par that have paranormal stuff in there so Absolutely. i don't understand what the big deal is yeah i think you know when i look at the you know again the history i look back to the the turn of the 20th century and i think what you see in the churches there was a lot of uh kind of backlash to try and combat evolution and the right. enlightenment age right that you had you had scholars who were challenging the bible and I think a knee-jerk reaction among a lot of leaders in the church and teachers to say, you know, we, let's just focus on like the more practical applications of the Bible. Let's not right, get right, into right. the supernatural realm. Let's keep the Bible as plain as possible so people will accept it. But you're sweeping a lot of what's happening under the rug, <laughs> unfortunately, when you do that. So, um, yeah, that's what I found. I mean, and then what else I think, and I'm not going to say it's hypocritical on the part of the church or anything, but... One of the other things that I found is that, like, like when you want to, when you go out to a case where, where you think you've got a demon out there, and before they'll even come out, the ghost, they make the ghost hunters go out and tabulate, you know, and and and, and, and look at everything, write it all down for them, and then take it to them. Wow, there you go. So there's belief there, but they're not going to admit there's belief there. It, there you go. Perfect example. You know, and, and, and this is the challenge, right? It's no it's no uh, it's no mystery that the, the church uh, in America is going through some branding issues and mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you got to work on the brand. And, and a lot of it, again, is you just have to embrace these things. Right. The, right. I, 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 don't, I don't I never really understood the point of rejecting the supernatural, but still believing the Bible. The Bible is mm -hmm. all about super. There are miracles and supernatural things happening throughout the entire Bible. Oh, so I don't see why we should we have to shy away from things like ghosts or demons or, again, the angelic realm, the spirit realm, like, you know, possession. These are things that we see all throughout the Bible through scripture. So there's no point in, in shying away from it in our actual life, in this world that we're living in right now, outside of just the book. So oh, I agree 100 percent. I do. And. And some of it is obvious, and some of you know, in the Bible, some of it's obvious, some of it's not so obvious. That's why you're here. I think my, my audience is going to enjoy this immensely because I know I have people that, that, that follow the, the same type of topic. So sure. Can you tell me, I mean, from you know, the obvious, I mean, the obvious one is you know, after, after, after Jesus was crucified, he appeared to the you know, to all the you know, to, to, to people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that's the most obvious ghost that there is. Yeah, yeah what are the other links in the bible sure well it really goes back to uh to to the garden of eden right so this is the thing that, that's the beauty of it, is that there's so much of these concepts are in the stories that most everyone knows the most famous ones right so you can look at the garden of eden 
And what I focus on is the fact that obviously Adam and Eve sinned, they ate from the tree from the forbidden fruit. But when you get to their punishment, God punishes Adam, Eve, and the devil. And he tells the devil from the beginning, from the third chapter of the Bible, that he was going to be defeated by a child. A child. He says that the, I'm going to put war between you, your seed, and the seed of the woman. The seed of a woman was going to so mean a child was one day going to be born who was going to defeat him. I call it the ultimate prophecy. Right. It's like straight out of a out of a movie. Right. One day a child will be born who will defeat the, the enemy and restore righteousness. But it was important because from the fallen angelic perspective, this gave the devil a target. So, oh, my! I got to stop this child from being born or destroy this child in order. To, so I don't get defeated. Right. And this is what takes us to the Nephilim, the birth of the Nephilim, because you go a few chapters later, Genesis six, and you get the, the account of noah's ark again an account that's very popular people generally know Noah with all the animals getting on the ark and there's a flood but why did it happen it wasn't just because humanity was being sinful it's because the fallen angels again took these entered into the human realm took human women as wives you see this in genesis chapter six married them and had the hybrid offspring called the nephilim the giants and they overran the earth. The testimony of Genesis 6 is that the earth was filled with violence, that there was genetic manipulation and corruption. And why? Because the whole idea was if the devil couldn't stop this child, if he could corrupt the human genome, human genetics, and make us something other than image bearers of God, other than human, he could prevent mm -hmm. the, the, the Savior, the Messiah, from being born. And so this is where we get the Nephilim. We talk about that term Nephilim or giants from. They were these hybrid beings. And we see representations of this all throughout different cultures, right? You look at ancient Greek mythology, you have these, the, the demigods, the titans, and they're the offspring of a god and a human woman come together, right? These hybrid beings who have superhuman powers. And this is what we see in the Bible. And this was the real reason for the flood. God was basically rebooting the hum human race. He had to wipe out 99% of the population. And he chose Noah, who one, was a believer, but also it says that, and this is really fascinating, it says that he was perfect in his genes, his generations. And that term perfect in Hebrew, tamim, is a physical perfection. He was perfectly human. So he was chosen to restart the human race after the flood. And so, and what I later explain is that when you get to the New Testament or even later on in the Bible, you see the demons now throughout the Bible, possessing people, possessing, going into animals and things of that nature. They, those are the spirits of the deceased Nephilim. Interesting. I mean, this is all interesting. You know, I wish I would have read into it like you do. I think this is great. Um, so the, 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 they live among us, don't they? Or, or they did live among us at one time. Absolutely. You know, and, th and this is, this is, and this is why, you know, I, I kind of ended my first book on a cliffhanger because we're told Jesus said in the new Testament, he said, as it was in the days of Noah, so mm -hmm. shall it be in the days of the coming of the son of man. So everything's going to repeat. And what I talk about in, in both my books is that in the days of Noah, in the days of before the flood, what I call the veil, that barrier between the human realm, the supernatural realm, between the spirit world and the natural world, the fourth dimension essentially was removed. You had angels openly interacting with human beings. Adam and Eve are talking to the devil in the Garden of Eden. They're all standing there together having a conversation. So the veil was removed. And I believe that, so yes, angels were living among human beings. The Nephilim were, spirits were, the demons were. So they were all cohabiting earth together. And, and, and the Bible prophesies it's going to happen once again. Fully, I was say, if you have to see. Well, I was going to ask you if, if you think that's happening now. I mean, with all this oh, yeah. Absolutely. A absolutely. Yes, I do think it's happening now. But they, and, and this is, again, is why we have to, you know, for the for Christians to embrace this stuff. Because you look again, you go thousands of years later to the New Testament when Jesus is on earth and there are people possessed by demons. Jesus speaks to the spirits. They he even asked one spirit, what is your name? And he says, my name is Legion, because we are many. He was a man who had thousands of spirits inside one body. And so they're talking to him. They, In fact, and they actually know who he is. They say, you are the Christ, the son of God. So the Bible makes it clear that not only are spirits among us, they can indwell us. And Jesus even compares, even says they look at us like homes, like a house. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they see us like a house and they leave us and they may come back with seven more 
to, and still take us over again. So it's a very real part of the Bible. I think a real part of the world we live in right now. Wow, that's yeah, that, that's mind blowing. So when we talk about the you know the paranormal, the Bible, are we talking about like the miracles that Jesus was able to create? I mean, are those like psychic miracles or what? Because I know I know psychics are unknown known too. So is, is that what that that is? Yeah, I, yeah. So you know, I think that I think you know the Bible is pretty clear that <laughs> heavenly realm beings, beings that are from that dimension, have powers that go beyond human power, superhuman ability, right? Whether it's, uh, again, the ability to show visions. Like there are prophets in the Bible who are godly prophets who God showed them visions, but there are uh, there are angels who let people see things in the Bible. So there's that. There are angels who fly in the Bible. They have supernatural strength. So, so we see that, yes, of course, Jesus, of course, performed miracles all throughout scripture. He raised people from the dead. Right. But, there are, but also we see just in general, you know, you have an angel who was able to make a hundred men blind in a moment. Right. So, so it's not so angelic beings, they have powers that go beyond normal human ability. So, yeah. So, I, I you know, I don't know if I would categorize it as psychic power, so to speak, but there's definitely, I, I just call it kind of divine power, right? There's definitely, there's, and there are different levels. You have some angels who are more powerful than others. I mean, Jesus is more powerful than all of them, you know? So, and then it's in the Bible, it even says that we're on the bottom of the totem pole because it says that. Humans were made a little lower than the angels. So the Bible is clear that there is rankings and powers and hierarchy in terms of who has power and who doesn't, or to what extent you have it. Interesting. Um, I'm thinking that, okay, maybe some of the psychics that we have now here on Earth maybe are descendants of these Nephilim. Yeah, it's possible. Or or they're just getting um, spiritual assistance, right? And this is what we see in the Old Testament, you know, King Saul is an account of King Saul going to see um, a medium in, at Endor, you know, um, which is also used in Star Wars, by the way, <laughs> many, many, many centuries later by George Lucas for Yoda's uh, home planet. But um, so now we know where Yoda came from. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, he came from the Bible. We got that from the Bible. Yeah, he got it from Endor. It's from the Bible. So and so what you see is, you know, they call that an ob. And, or Aub in Hebrew, and and, and this that. so the, the the medium was assisted by a familiar spirit, and so there's this old uh, Hebrew concept of a spirit that can just follow someone around, and mm -hmm. that spirit, you know, if they it's just like imagine a private detective following, you know, casing somebody, you know, following someone around, and to the point that you know they do it for a few days, you're going to know a lot about somebody, where right. they go, what do they eat, what time do they wake up, what time do they go to bed, things like that, and so now that spirit goes to the medium and someone comes and says, I need information. I want to know about my, my, you know, my spouse or my, my great, great grandmother. And that spirit is now telling the medium all this information because they are familiar with that person. And so, so I think that's how a lot of uh, the psychics today, you know, operate, you know, I, I'm someone who I actually, um, I, you're probably getting the, the gist of my, my, my theology. I, definitely believe that this, there are psychics who have real power today who are actually using ability they're not they're not hustlers and uh right. damn artists and i which i know i'm from new york city i'm from the home of the hustlers so I, there are some who are fake but i believe there's some who are real who are, have real ability and i think it's again really it's always about trying if you can access the spirit realm there's there is power there right so there is right. and so i think that's what they're that's where they're getting it from do you think, you know, because, you know, for every good, there has to be evil. Yeah, of course. As a, as a balance. So do you think there'll ever be a time here on Earth, and that's assuming the end doesn't come, you know, for everybody, but will there ever be a time where there's complete peace on the Earth, do you think? I do. Yeah, I, of course. Yeah, I think that, you know, I, I again, you know, we look into the, the end times and, and the prophecies of the Bible, it predicts a time where Jesus, you know, we think about, the common, again, the common thing is, okay, everyone, if you're a believer and you're a Christian, you just go to heaven, you live in heaven all forever. But, you know, that's really not what the Bible says. The Bible says that Jesus is going to return to earth and he's going to rule on earth. And that's the time when they talk about the fact that it says that, that you know, the nations will, you know, uh, turn their swords into pruning hooks. They will take their weapons and turn them into tools to farm with. And so there will be a time of peace on earth. You know, you see, and that's what, that's what Jesus promises. The Bible promises there will be peace that the devil himself will be locked away 
in the bottomless pit in the abyss for a thousand years. And so I do believe there'll be an era of peace. And in fact, um, even the earth itself will be transformed. It'll be, they call it the regeneration. I believe that the earth will be restored to how it was in the Garden of Eden. Will there be vegetation everywhere? There'll be a hyperbaric environment. That's why it says lifespans will extend again. Where people, it says, it says that when in the millennium, when Jesus rules, if you die at age 100, you're, you're cursed. That's like, that's a young, that's a young death. Because people will go back to living to be 700, 800, 900 years old. And so we'll see this restoration and a world the way God intended. You know, what's interesting about that statement is that we kind of saw that during the COVID epidemic. Because when people stopped going out and, and, and dirt, dirt, you know, dirtying everything, polluting everything, the rivers cleaned up, the air cleaned up. You know? The animals were coming in, you know, people started to go <laughs> back to a natural state. So I get it. Yeah, I understand that. That's a great point. Yeah, I, I, I agree. That's a very good point. Yeah. And this is what this is. This is what the, the Bible says. There'll be peace on earth with hum, humans, but also and even peace between animals, too. You know, the book of Isaiah even says that that's the time where it says that a child can play with a lion. That even the, 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 the animosity between animals and humans, even that will be gone. That we even have peace that now there'll be no more predators and wild animals. And there's no more fear that, that will, even that will be eliminated um, when Jesus returns and rules on earth. So like, like comparing stuff with the paranormal. Okay. What do you see going on right now that kind of fits that right now? Uh, in in terms of just the paranormal in general, or uh, yeah, I mean, I think that, <laughs> I, I think a lot of things are happening right now. So one, I think that from a from a, a spiritual example, I, I'm a big believer that spirits guide a lot of what we do. That we're not even aware of how much of a role spirits play in our lives. And you know, you may have a day where you you could have you know something terrible could happen to you, but there was spirits who were trying to save you from it, and some who were trying to make it happen, and we're not even aware of these things, and we won't even know these things until eternity, and so I think that, but at the same time, also we're getting inspired by them, like even the word inspiration has the word spirit in it, and so when I look at so much of what's happening in the world, there is so much animosity. Look at this, just the past couple of weeks. You know, with Supreme Court says the way there's so much hatred in the world and that that civility that we can't even have families are separated, can't eat Thanksgiving dinner anymore because they're so opposed to each other. Friendships are broken. Like I believe those that's negative spirits. Those are evil spirits that are working in the world. So I think on that level, there's a lot of spiritual influence going on. But then on another level, we can look at things like the increase in UFO sightings, UFO disclosure, the whole alien phenomenon, which I believe is ultimately a spiritual phenomenon. You know, that's what I believe. And, and we're seeing an increase. We're seeing now all of a sudden the CIA, the Israeli government, the British government, all of a sudden are just releasing classified documents from the 40s, 50s, 30s. All, it's all just coming out. And where is that leading? Why is that happening now? I think, again, we're I think we are racing towards that point again, where, as Jesus prophesied, the veil is going to be removed that the spirit realm is going to start openly manifesting. And these are kind of like the precursors, the early steps and stages before we get to that ultimate revealing where mm -hmm. this is going to really manifest in, in front of our faces. So, Wasn't there supposed to be, I don't know what they were calling it, but there just, it was supposed to be, like you say, already starting, that, that, that there was supposed to be some kind of thing coming up the next couple of years where people were going to start seeing you know, more clearly and, and whatnot. Yeah, well, I mean, there are lots of, I mean, there are several um, predictions out there, you know, you know, right now yeah. for, for this kind of era we're in, there's some for 2025 that people are going to say there's, there are a lot of things that people are pointing to in terms of uh, different prophecies, the Apophis right. uh, asteroid that some people say is the Wormwood, the Wormwood asteroid of the Bible. Uh, there are some prophecies for 2022, even that people were expecting in February 2nd of 2022, you know, different alignments and things like that. And so, Again, when I look and I see those things, whether they're coming from Christianity, whether they're coming out of the New Age or different spiritual beliefs, again, I think what it's showing us is that we are, it's all converging. Mm -hmm. Even in the science realm, even in the advances that we're making in the sciences, a lot of what I talk about in my second book deals with uh, quantum physics and how I believe quantum physics is like the closest scientific discipline to actually looking at the spirit realm. 
Because what it's saying is that when you look at subatomic particles, they're not behaving normally. That they can, they'll be doing two things at the same time, quantum superposition, or existing in two different places in two different at two different places, the same particle at the same time. They're behaving how spirits behave. And so even that, I think, you look at CERN, you know, so many people say is that, is that CERN machine in France, is it trying to open up a portal, a stargate to another dimension, right? They're trying to really rip a hole in the fabric of time with a machine. Right. And so even that is all to me showing humanity is getting closer to how it really was originally in ancient times when this, when there was really the spirit realm was openly interacting, right? This, this, this kind of the, the veil was gone. You know, one example, when you think of technology, it's a, it's a, ancient technology and show how it relates to modern technology, right. you know, you, you, you have, in the, again, in the book of Genesis, the account of the Tower of Babel, right? So this great tower, after this is after the flood now, so now we're back in normal times, the veil is here, so you don't have angels running around anymore. Mm -hmm. But, you know, humanity united in one place to make a tower that, that can reach heaven. And I believe what they wanted to do was, again, try and pierce the veil and access the heavenly realm. And it says God's response, I think, is one of the most shocking verses in the Bible. God, it says God looks down at the tower and says, if they complete and finish this tower, there is nothing that they imagine to do that will be withheld from them. Literally, that's, and that's God speaking. So there was something that they were manifesting or going to access that if they had finished this, they literally could do anything. I mean, and that's God saying, so, it, you know, and of course God comes down and destroys the tower and scatters the nation. He's right. he in different languages. But that statement showed that there was something in this technology, there was something they were doing that was going to literally access unlimited power, supernatural power. I believe that, and when we talk about that divine power. Mm -hmm. So fast forward now, you know, you look at what, you know, you, you know, uh, one thing I talk about in my book again also is that you look at these Silicon Valley tech moguls right so you know you know these people you know whether it's uh larry page the google founders bill gates mark zuckerberg elon musk and what you know things they're seeking they're investing millions and millions of dollars into what they call life extension technology they're, they're seeking immortality you know these 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 guys have conquered all their professional goals it's like it's not about selling things anymore or marketing and branding they're like no we want to live forever and now they're trying to literally, and they're investing, you know, Google has a, a company called Calico. I mean, so I think it has about 200, 300 million dollars in funding to research how to be immortal or transfer your consciousness into a computer, you know, to live on forever. So again, this idea of a technology that can access divine power. And so again, I think, again, we're seeing this idea. This is what I call quantum repetition where things are happening in cycles. There's like a scroll of time in humanity where we're seeing again, like a scroll where the end is the beginning and the beginning is the end. Now we're, we're, going, we're going back to almost like a Tower of Babel scenario where you have the, the most wealthiest, most successful people there. They could care less about the money anymore. Now it's about basically being like gods, right? Being mm -hmm. like divine beings. Well, my question for that is God is, is letting it happen. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I mean, like, like with every other great society, I mean, we'll talk about the Romans, you know, and their downfall and everything. At some point, when we get too powerful, he's going to, I mean, some, someone's going to snap us back. Yes, yes, it is de definitely right. We've seen it throughout the ages, um, except except the only exception to that, of course, again, look in the book of Revelation and talks about, you know, the, the, the final kingdom of Antichrist, which I think will be a kingdom that's part supernatural, will be an angel. Again, you know, he, I believe that the Antichrist is the final Nephilim. That, you know, he is, the, he is the, the key figure of my second book, the final Nephilim, that it is the Antichrist. Um, that kingdom is going to really achieve, you know, all this great technological success. It's going to get, it's going to be defeated and conquered and God's going to come down and, and shut it down. But, a lot of what I think we're talking about is going to be achieved, even immortality itself. You know, I talk about how there's a, in Revelation nine, there's a, there's a period where it says for five months that people will seek to die. They'll seek death, chase down death, and they won't be able to die. And so, uh, and I believe that will be a time where people actually have achieved immortality for a temporary amount of time that they, they actually cannot, the Bible says they cannot die. They're going to, people are going to try to die and won't be able to. 
do you think um, the, these guys that are trying to do this to, to create immortality, is that God pushing them to do that or is that God doing it through them? Yeah. So, you know, great question. I think God is, is allowing it because I think this is where it has to go. Right. You know, even even think about, you know, one of the amazing things is, you know, when you look at Bible prophecy is, again, this idea of technology. You know, you know, the, the book of Revelation was written in 96 A.D. And, you know, you look at the mark of the beast where it says there's going to be a mark that you put in your hand or your forehead. And you have to, it's the only way you can buy or sell anything in the world. You know, and that was written in the first century. I mean, think about that, where you could, if you had a horse, you could get something. If you had beans, you could you could barter. Anything was commerce. Anything was currency at that time. So the idea that you had to something in your hand to buy and sell anything or you can't eat or buy anything, that's so beyond comprehension at that time. But yet now that technology is here. We have it. That, that is very realistic today. So I think these things have to happen because God predicted it. The Bible says this is what's going to happen. So I think in a way, all these tech moguls, they're working, you know, they're fulfilling what God is ultimately saying is going to happen in this world and be and be done all over the world. And also what spirits are inspiring them, right? What spirits are inspiring these ideas? You know, it's, it's you know, you look at some of the... Uh, some of the uh, beliefs that are going on, they even have churches now of AI <laughs> in uh, Silicon Valley. So they're creating some of the people who are trying to make an actual religion built around artificial intelligence. And mm -hmm. so what spirit is leading that? You look again to the book of Revelation, the Antichrist, and it says that he, the Antichrist, of course, will rule the earth, who will be seen as the savior of the earth and rule for seven years. It says he has a, a right-hand man, the false prophet, Who's like his, his prime minister, his pope, his religious leader who points everyone and say, yeah, this is the guy. This is the savior every religion's been waiting for. He's finally here. But interestingly enough, it says that rather than people worshiping the Antichrist directly in person, what do they do? They create the image of the beast, this statue. But they say that that has to be worshipped of the Antichrist. But, it's, but it says it's alive. It says it's given life. And it actually knows who's worshiping it all over the world. It can know. So this is, again, to me, one, this that has to be artificial intelligence. It's built, it's created, but it's alive. And it has knowledge of what everyone else, everyone's doing on the world. Because you have to worship it under penalty of death. So when you think about that, how could that be done, right? If we're all, if we're all jacked into the same neural network well then guess what now I, I do know what you're doing right now i can say oh you're sleeping you're you're on california haunt right now <laughs> like you know so, so but these again these are ideas that just until the last 10 years didn't even seem possible but now the idea that we could all be in the same metaverse or all have our, you know the matrix jack in the back of our heads and we're all plugged into the same server right these are things that now are, are entering the realm of possibility and so again i think that uh it's no surprise, right? God is allowing these things because it's all going, it's all converging, like I said, on fulfilling what the Bible wrote 2,000 years ago. And it's just amazing. We're, we're, we're obviously close. <laughs> I've heard people who have thought that it, that uh, these, these aliens that uh, people keep encountering aren't aliens, but they're angels or fallen angels. Yeah, so John Keel, you know, uh, one of the most famous ufologists, Mothman Prophecies, uh, Fox Mulder of X Files was based on him. You know, he he, uh, you know, was one of one of the legends in UFO research. Uh, he started out just uh, you know in the normal kind of path of these are, you know, extraterrestrial entities from other planets when exploring UFOs and aliens. But in the end of his career, after all his research, he can he concluded he said that basically there's very little difference between the erratic behavior of UFOs and aliens and the demons and spirits. That we see described in the Bible. So he actually, in the end, saw it as a spiritual phenomenon. And that's what I see it as. You know, we know that when you look in the Bible, angels are shapeshifters. They can take the appearance of different things. The, the devil appears as a serpent in Genesis. He's not, a, you know, a man walking around. So he's, he's clearly called a serpent. In Revelation, he appears as a dragon. So he, they, are, they can take on different appearances. And so I believe when we look at things like the greys, um, or the the Venusians and different types of alien classes or beings um, that these are these are spirits taking on a different form. In fact, you know it's pretty amazing 
uh, one of the the one of the, the oldest existing commentary on Revelation. It's a book uh, called "On Christ and Antichrist," written by Hippolytus, who was an old a, a third century uh, theologian, writing in 202 A.D. He describes uh, this kind of return, the return of the fallen angels to earth openly, and rather than them coming as like horrible beings who are attacking and they're ugly and they want to kill everybody. He describes them as beautiful. He says, just, he describes them as, he says, thousands of these beautiful angelic beings glowing in light with beautiful voices floating in the sky. He, that's how, and it's like, you know, you could easily see how it could translate to UFOs that they could say right. that we're aliens from another planet and we have come to redeem you, to rescue you, to help advance you. We, we created you 7,000 years ago. We planted you on the earth and whatever types of things they want to say. But I think ultimately it will always, it will be spiritual. Um, that if people are really seeing things, but again, I believe that UFO sightings and even abduction scenarios, I believe that many of them are real, but they're spiritual encounters rather than uh, physical extraterrestrial uh, encounters. Well, you know, the, there have been abductions where people have gone aboard and they've described angelic beings being on the ships. And exactly. they're very calming, you know, and, and very, very, very like, you, like you would expect an angel to be. So it makes a lot of sense. Definitely. And isn't it also interesting that in many of those uh, abduction scenarios, a lot of it deals with reproduction. A lot of it deals with organs and sex organs and reproduction and pregnancy implantations. What was taking place in the days of Noah? You had fallen angels impregnating human women, right? Doing genetic manipulation. They said even the animals were corrupted in the days of Noah. So when you look again to mythology, you look at things like the centaur, the minotaur, these are half horse, half man, half bull, half man, all these things. Again, this is what the Bible is telling us. You may not hear it from your pastor on Sunday, but it's right. in there. <laughs> it's definitely in there. And uh, so again, I think that, you know, when you look at the, the abduction scenario, you're seeing this I, these common themes. Um, and I think it's all because, again, it's, it's going back to the same, it, it's all coming back to the same source, the spirit realm. Well, you know, when you think about history itself, it always gets to a certain point and then it shifts gears back when you look at it, you know, and, and you're and you're probably and you're more than likely right that we're going to have that shift again. It's coming. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think that, you know, again, I, I kind of call it the, the scroll of time that mm -hmm. events and I think it's very intentional. It's very intentional. Even. uh you know, in the book of Genesis, this account of Joseph, Joseph is this, he's hes sold into slavery in Egypt. He's thrown in jail for a crime he did not commit. He's having a very tough life, but God gave him a gift that he could interpret dreams. And the Pharaoh of Egypt is being plagued by these dreams. He doesn't know. And Joseph goes to interpret it. And he says he has two different dreams that ultimately predicted a famine was coming to Egypt. So they had to prepare for seven years and save up foods for because there are going to be seven years of famine following it. But the interesting thing Joseph said was, I know this is from God because you dreamt the same dream twice. Mm -hmm. So this idea of things repeating is a sign of God's work. It's like God's mm -hmm. handiwork is that he's God's going to show us events over and over again. This is what the Bible calls uh, similitudes, types and shadows and foreshadows. And even Joseph himself, he's a foreshadow of Jesus, right? He saves his, his 11 brothers who were going to be the fathers of the 12 tribes of Israel, even though they rejected him, they, they sold him into slavery, they betrayed him, he still saves them. So it's a lot of what we see in the Bible of what God is showing us is through this idea of repetition, of things repeating and having types and shadows all throughout to, until their ultimate fulfillment. Well, I can tell you, even my father, who wasn't overly religious, mm -hmm. always told me that history repeats itself. Yes, yeah, I agree. I, I couldn't. I, I couldn't agree more. I absolutely agree. What do you think um, when you start comparing, you know, paranormal stuff with the Bible? What stands out to you the most? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I, I would say what what stands out the most is the you know we there's something is this is are uh, the human fascination. You know, there's something like something. So, uh, some, I, get, I get a lot of questions and I love answering questions. I, I, I love it. I get a lot, a lot of questions every week from people about different things in the Bible. that are supernatural. And I think one thing I find that's interesting is that 
the Bible, for example, only gives the names of two angels, Michael and Gabriel. Those are the only names you see, even though there are lots of angels in the Bible. Right. We only, we're given very limited information because I think there's something in us naturally as human beings that is drawn to the spirit realm, right? They're like angels are like our cooler cousins, right? <laughs> like they're more, they're cooler, they're bigger, they're more powerful. They're, and, and so like, so, and I think that no matter where you go in the world, we have an innate attraction to the divine. And, uh, and so, and so it doesn't matter what country you're in. It doesn't matter whether you call it, whether it's Christianity, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, certainly, like I said, if you go into the Caribbean, those nations, like, you know, where my family's from is, and there, you're going to see, you know, or in uh, the Central America, the Amazon, Peru, uh, there's, we have this natural inclination and attraction to the divine, to the spirit realm. And I think that that's something I think when God says that he's breathed his spirit into us, you know, he, the idea of the breath of life, that he's given us his breath, that it's in us. It's like calling us back no matter how, you know, it's, you know, it's every country is going to have a form of spirituality. This it, bar none, it doesn't matter. Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia. It, and so there's something in us innately that um, draws us to the spirit realm. And I think it's, it's that to me, is so um, fascinating because I feel it myself. I love like these types of conversations. And when I read the Bible, I feel a spiritual connection to the divine, that it's supernatural. It's opening something supernatural that is mind blowing. And so I think that we all have that in us. It's just um, being willing to acknowledge it. <laughs> you know, some people don't. Some people, some people say, I don't believe in anything. I don't, you know, I believe in absolutely nothing supernatural. But right. is that really true? I question that. Is it really true? I is it really, I, tell me, you know, that they have, uh, that, that, that they've had experiences psychically, and then they'll say, but I'm not a psychic. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> you know? I, this funny. has happened to me. This has happened to me. I've done this, but I don't, I don't know that's like it. It, it, exactly right. Yeah. So, and 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 I, and I get it. Again, you know, um, it's it, although it's becoming more common now. You know, it's funny. Uh, it, again, you know, I think about uh, when I started my career, right? In in right. again working in, in Wall Street, as serious mm -hmm. as you can get in terms of corporate America. The idea, if I look at what people who I know who are friends of mine are doing spiritually now who still work in those areas compared to when I started my career 20 years ago, it would never be done. You wouldn't have, you know, executives, senior executives going to Peru for ayahuasca pilgrimages and retreats that would never be happening or wearing energy crystals. But now it's commonplace. Like now right. it's like, so again, so even, even in seeking spiritual, spiritual experiences and seeking the divine, mm -hmm. It's we're, again, I think, again, we're getting closer with the Bible it says it's the ultimate removing of the veil, because now it's not seen as so as we so weird or inappropriate for people to do things like that right, um, right, right. in a very short amount of time. So it's uh, again, I, I think, you know, we are we are con all things are converging um, towards a full revealing. Right. Which is why the last book of the Bible is called Revelation. It's the, right, the right, veil is right. going to be pulled back. The curtains pulled back. And it's like, this is what's been going on the whole time. <laughs> We're going to show you everything you've thought about and been curious about and saw little glimpses of. It's all going to be revealed. Um, well, when you think about the whole spiritual thing going on, I mean, when I first started doing this 25 years ago, we would get calls. Okay. You know, there weren't a lot of calls coming in, you know, but we, we would get calls to go out and, and cover cases. TV shows come out. Of course, that spreads more awareness. But still, now, I mean, the calls, they're, it's ringing off the hook all the time. It's like the, the whole COVID thing, because people were stuck at home, they got right. more spiritual. Exactly. And so they, and because they were at home, they noticed more things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's amazing. You know, I, I, I you're really uh, opening my thoughts to that. I, I just never really considered that the impact from a spiritual standpoint of people learning. Right. And being aware the awareness of it when you when you have to pause your day to day distractions, everything you have to do on your to do list and the honey do list and the grocery list and all those things to just sit down and be still, you know, which mm -hmm. the Bible says, right. Be still and know that I am God, that there's mm -hmm. there's a there's a there's an awareness that comes out of stopping and just 
paying attention to what's just actually right in front of your face. And so, yeah, so I, I, that makes perfect sense. And of course, then with the time to do the research, once you start looking a little bit and now you're home and you, have, you can stay up as late as you want because you're not driving to, to an hour to work in the morning, you can really get deep. So I'm not surprised that you're getting your phones ringing off the hook yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. now. And even with the shows, you know, I mean, there are so many more shows. I mean, I, it's it's honestly, and I'm sure you've been, you said you've been doing this for 25 years. I, I, there, Even if you look at the shows that people watch, I'm stunned that people, so many people now are into shows that are about the paranormal or, you know, 20 years ago, it was a very small minority of us who were really passionate about these types of things and exactly. just, just exactly. for inter, even just for entertainment. But now it's like, you know, you have, you know, it's just, it's just so strange. It's like, Oh, my, my, my neighbor lost the shows about ghosts and supernatural. It's, but it's, it's so much more, it's primetime television now. And so it, it's, it's really interesting. It's really interesting that, you know, again, I, I believe it's all preparation that we have to be prepared. Like I always say, you know, when they talk about those last seven years, the great tribulation um, before the return of Christ, I always say, you know, there's there are no atheists in the great tribulation. You know, they say there's no atheist in the foxhole. There's just no way that there's going to be no one can say, I just don't believe anything spiritual when this stuff is going to be openly manifesting in front of you. What, what can right. you say? There's no denying it, you know, and so. I think the seeds are being planted now and, and seeing how people are so much more open to these things now mm -hmm. that we're no longer the weirdos on the, in the fringe believers of things paranormal. It's like very, 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 it's so much more common, so much more accepted. It, there has to be a reason for that. And so right, uh, right. the other thing I think too, is I, I, yeah, I've talked to people about this before is this, this hybrid thing. Like you talk about, you know, the the, uh, fi the the physical alien abductions and all this the hybrids, you know I'm you know for all we know, because they almost look exactly like us. It could be people living on your street, and I think this whole gradual build up to all this, like you say, is a build up to 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 us to get used to being around these people, so that finally when when that when, when the opening comes and they say hey this is what's going on, we're not going to be petrified. Exactly. You know, and that, and that's the, that's the amazing thing is that, again, looking at prophecy, that the interesting thing about the Antichrist, even though, you know, he's the villain, he is the seed of the, I believe he's the literal seed of the devil, because God told the devil from the Garden of Eden, I'm going to put war between your seed and her seed. That means there's two kids here. <laughs> one is the Messiah, one is the anti-Messiah. But the Antichrist is not going to be uh he's not going to come out on this world scene as this horrible tyrant. Again, it's going to be this, he's going to be someone who the people are going to voluntarily choose to follow and worship and love. They say, who's like him? No one's like him. There's no one. They, people are going to be amazed by him rather than being scared of him. They're going to be amazed. And so I think there's, I think there's truth to what you're saying. This idea that we had to be prepared to accept and embrace these beings because mm -hmm. they're, they're, I don't think they're going to come to earth with their, you know, guns blazing and lasers and swords and right. teeth and fangs, I think it's right. going to be more like, he, we're here for you. Yeah. We want to help you. We want to help you evolve. Or we made you some scenario like that where it's more, we're benevolent beings as opposed to like, we're here to, 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 to destroy you. Right. Um, so, right. yeah, so I think, yeah, the right. idea that we are getting prepared to accept hybrid beings, fallen angels, and things of that nature. I, I, I did a... Um, I did my first in-person presentation in Colorado Springs last month, and I showed some clips from some shows that are on TV right now, because there are a lot of shows now that talk about the Nephilim mm -hmm. that are just regular TV shows. They're not religious programming. And there was one uh, show where they actually just say, yeah, you know, there's the, uh, there's a the child who was just born and someone says, and, you know, it, it was uh, the show Supernatural. Uh, on the CW, I think 13, 14 years. And they say, you know, one of them feels who's, a, who's like has psychic ability, feels like a, she's like something just happened. He said, a Nephilim was born. And he just, and they just, they just explain it. And they say, yeah, the offspring of an angel and a human woman, a hybrid offspring. And they say, yeah, and this was the, uh, it's the son of the devil. And they said, and they say, stay. they actually say this devil had a child who is a Nephilim. And so, uh, but of course they know they don't make it so serious because right after that, the person says, um, oh, I didn't know he was dating. And <laughs> so, but it's amazing that they're putting these ideas out there already. Right. 
Right. That this is just, I mean, that's a super popular show that's been on for almost two decades. And they're just casually saying exactly what the Bible says. And he, he explained it. It's the offspring of a fallen angel and a human woman. It's a hybrid. And in this, so it's again getting us ready to accept these concepts. You know, even the show uh Lucifer on Netflix. Right. Uh and I think in either the last season or the season before, in the last two seasons, he has a child. Lucifer has a child. This is his daughter, who's a Nephilim, and she's called a Nephilim on the show. So it's again, it's amazing that they're putting these things. It's now becoming. I actually said to um, there was a woman uh, at, at the conference I spoke at in Colorado Springs who I was speaking to, and she said, "Hey, you know," she said, "Uh, you know, you." She said, "You, I, I didn't know all these shows and these books were talking about these things." And she said, "You know, I want to talk to my grandkids about this. They're teenagers. How do I talk to them about it? How do I explain?" I said, "I said your, I said your grandkids." probably know a lot more about the Nephilim and angels than you do. I'm like, so don't worry about like, you're not going to shock them by saying this stuff. I'm like, they probably know much more about it than you do. Cause it's become super, super popular in, in a uh, teen lit, like kind of teen, what, what they call the YA, the young adult novels, TV shows, movies. And so again, it, it's, we are moving at a fast pace to, I believe what, what again is the apocalypse, the revelation, the removing of the veil. Well, what, I, what I was thinking while you were talking is these people that are making, that are writing these scripts, the producers that are doing this stuff probably don't even realize that they are messengers, and that's essentially what they are. They're acting, they're acting as messengers to get to get the word out to people. Exactly right, and so so much of what I believe the kingdoms of the devil, it's really a mirror image, right? Like the Antichrist is, he's like the mirror image of. Jesus of the Messiah. And so I believe even that, that idea, what did Jesus do? He sent his disciples out into the world, go out into the world, teach everyone about me. So it's the same idea, right? And, and the devil is going to have his messengers to get his message out there. And then, so I believe, right, it's a lot of what you see and what these writers are doing, they, they are not even aware of it, right? They, where are they getting these ideas from? It's, you know, even uh, some of the biggest authors, you know, J.K. Rowling, you know, uh, they, 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 many of these famous authors that say they just these things just came to them. They just started writing. Their hand just starts moving, and the story just comes out. You know, automatic writing. You know, so yeah, I believe in many instances these people are just messengers uh, on behalf of the spirit realm. This is just so fascinating to me. You know, to talk about because as a ghost hunter, I like I said, I can see the trends. I can see more paranormal activity. You know, I can see it increasing. And, and it's interesting because I remember in the early days, it was always Uncle Bob, you know, that he went out and it was, oh, great, it's my, my uncle or my grandma or somebody. But, but now as, as the stuff increases, it's more and more and more. I don't know if it's just the TV shows or if so, some divine power is making, is making people see more so they get used to it. I think it's both, right? I, I really do. I, I think it's both. And like you said, you're at, you know, you have your finger on the pulse of this. And when I look at the trends, Again, you know, you look at the three, I kind of see the Bible in three distinct eras, right? That you have the early, the days of Noah, the, the, the antediluvian era when everything was revealed. Then you, you skip thousands of years to when Christ was on earth. You have God on earth. And what do you see there? There's, there are demons and spirits running around all over the place at that time. All over the place. There are just, demons and spirits are everywhere. And, and now you skip again to those last seven years to the end times, I think we're going to see that, that so we're trending towards it again, right? It, was, right? it went down and now we're trending towards it again because we're reaching another one of these big inflection points where the spirit realm and the earthly realm are going to collide, right? And so, right. because that's what, obviously that's what happened in the gospels. You have Jesus on earth, right? Jesus is baptized uh, and heaven opens and God just speaks from heaven says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. The Holy spirit descends like a dove. And so this intersection of the, the realms. And so when you see it, when we're approaching that era, mm-hmm. you're going to see that influx and that increase in paranormal activity. And I think that's exactly why it's happening now. I can tell you, we had an investigation uh, three years ago at this woman's house. She thinks there was a demon out there. <laughs> I don't, you know, I'm still not sure we fought something out there. But the, the most scariest part was we went into an EVP session in her bedroom. And I played it back. And right away, you hear this voice say, Gabriel, watch out. Wow. And I just went, we got a problem. Wow. 
that serious. I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, and that's, and that's, and, that, and that's the thing about it is that, you know, uh, the weird thing about uh, our race, the human race, of course, is what I mean, is that we are kind of, we're kind of thrown into the, this battle in the middle of the movie. It's like mm -hmm. the, there was already the division in the heavenly kingdom between Satan, his armies and God and his armies. That was already taking place before we were ever created. So we're kind of thrown in in the middle and we're also kind of like the prize. Mm -hmm. So it's like, there's a lot of stuff happening that is beyond us, but it concerns us because it's really coming because they're both, both sides want us. Right. And so, um, yeah, I mean, that is, that's scary stuff. You know, when they're referencing Gabriel watch, I mean, that's really, it's, it's, it's <laughs> war. You know, it's a conflict. You know, that's, that's why God standing there in the room. Yeah. You know? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I just, I just turned over and I just went, we're in for a hum humdinger tonight. Because, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's one way to describe it. It is yeah. definitely a humdinger. They're for sure. Gabriel. Yeah. This, this is yeah. That's, that's you serious. Know? Right. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, it's, yeah. it's, and it's funny that you say that too, because, you know, even that is pretty amazing because, even that, you know, there's a there's a uh, there's an account in the book of Acts where some there are Christians, these these Christians who are trying to cast out demons mm -hmm. and the demon says to them, they're, they're called the sons of Sceva. Their father is a, a leader named Sceva. And the demon says to them, Jesus, I know and Paul, I know, but who are you? In other words, like if Jesus was here, we'd be scared. If the apostle Paul was here, we'd be scared. But who are you? Well, we don't know who you are, so we don't care less about you. And they end up ripping their clothes off, and the guys all run out of the house. And so <laughs> it's interesting. Again, again, you talk about this idea of calling out the name of Gabriel. That, that you know, this idea of hierarchy and rank. You yeah. know, that you were dealing with a serious level, high level entity for that ghost to be saying the name of Gabriel. That's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really interesting. It scared me. I mean, I yeah, know, yeah, you know, yeah. ghost hunters are supposed to stay brave, you know, when you're standing there. But when something, when something ta is talking to Gabriel and warning, you know, and warning him, good yeah. enough for me. Good exactly. enough for me. You yeah, know? yeah. This hour has blown by. <laughs> Definitely. And I want to thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely. Oh, it's my pleasure. This is I so really much fun. appreciate. I, I really appreciate it. I really, really do. And I would love to have you on again to talk to you some more. Yeah, I, I, listen, just let me know, Charlotte. I'll be happy to come on again. This is a lot of fun. I appreciate it. And I appreciate your work you do. Thank you very much. How can people find you? Oh, you can find me at judgmentofthenephilim.com. It's one word. That's my website. Uh, you can find all of my stuff, all my information. Contact me. I have books. I have documentaries I did. I have study guides. Also, my, my Instagram, my Facebook, and my YouTube channel are all Judgment of the Nephilim. Just one word. And uh, that's how you can find me. DM me. I have a show each week uh, on YouTube. Come on my channel. I have lots of videos up and content. Um, and I would love to hear from uh, from your listeners. All right. Well, thank you so much. And I so appreciate you coming on. I really do. And uh, wow, you just totally opened my mind to some stuff. So I, 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 I got to check out. <laughs> Great. Okay. Thanks for having me. Glad you enjoyed right. it. Have a good one. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Where's my mouse? There it is. <laughs> All right, guys, that was terrific, and I learned a lot, and I hope you did, too. Tomorrow, our guest is going to be Mark Gobi. We're going to be talking about alien abductions and how they relate to near-death experiences. So uh, that'll be at 6.30 p.m. Pacific. I'm going to go ahead and uh, flash his information across the screen here before we go, as like I usually do, and here it is. That would be the website at, ju at judgment of, uh, judgmentofthenephilim.com. And the book is Judgment of the Nephilim. And the final Nephilim. Uh, you can get those at Amazon or he does have them on his website. And again, I want to thank Ryan, and I want to thank you guys for joining us tonight. And if you like the show, share it with five people. If you hated the show, share it with five people anyway, because we're equal opportunity here at California Haunts Radio. You want to visit our site, that's CaliforniaHauntsRadio.com. You want to visit the paranormal site, that's CaliforniaHaunts.org. 
uh, as you can see that ticker flashing across the bottom, and that's because we don't take any money to do any of our investigations. So all the equipment comes out of my, I pay for everything because I'm the owner. All the equipment comes out of my pocket, just like the computers here, uh, the lights, the cameras, action, all that stuff comes out of my pocket and uh, the internet bill. So if you could help me out a little bit, that would be great. PayPal.me at California Haunts. Or if you don't like PayPal, you can go to Venmo and just type in California Haunts. I'd really appreciate it. And again, thank you guys so much for coming on, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a good night.